this is Brian Stillman with Be Terrific. I'm at CES 2019. We are with Strawbees Robotics. We're talking to them about their really cool product, Strawbees. It is a programming environment, a coding environment that kids can use to learn about this stuff and to learn about coding and programming and all these different things. Um, I'm with the founder, Eric. Eric, tell me a little bit about Strawbees. Yeah, so Strawbees, we're um, a creative construction tool to learn how to prototype. So we're process oriented. So you can see here, these aren't the most beautiful constructions, it's just sketches. So we want the kids to start sketching, implementing solutions. So everything needs to be pretty fast. So for example, this is a solar array where we talk about sustainable. You see, I'm covering the light from the, <laughs> see, see it moves towards the light. Um, but we teach iterative approach to problem solving and how to actually fail effectively. So I have one little experiment that is one of our introduction robotics things. This guy has been in Vegas for too long, you see, that's why his eyes are... But this is um, a robotics exercise where we teach them to build a very simple robot and then make it move as fast as possible. So we put it down on the ground uh, and we observe what happens. So you observe, this is a failure. A failure is, like, the difference between a failure and success is how you approach the failure. So now we look at why is it not moving? It's not touching the ground. So what can we do to change that? We can slide this one down. So you see all the changes are fluid and fast. So then we go back, we slide it down really far, put it down on the ground and see, oh, flips over. It's a failure again, but this time it's actually an awesome failure. We like it. It's going to be a nice art installation. So when the lights turn on, all the robots flip over, for example. But we still want to achieve our original goal. So we make one more change. We see it's touching the ground a little bit less, but maybe just enough to make it move. So you see, this is what we're teaching. This process of observing, building your creative confidence, building your power to observe and come up with the solution and implementing it. Uh, so we start with the physical thing and then we go over to the code. And all of this is the same speed, so it works within a 45 minute setting of a classroom, for example. So. <laughs> obviously, this, one. no, it's okay. That's okay. This is, it's really cool. It's obviously uh, designed at least with kids in mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. So who, where do you see this coming into play? Is it, you mentioned classrooms before. Yeah. Um, what age range? Uh, how do you see people actually using this? So we have the construction system. We start out at kindergarten. Uh, so from five years old around there. Uh, the robotics depends on the setting. Uh, the retail kit, we say that it starts at uh, 10 years old around there. But uh, we've, we've used it with uh, as young as seven-year-olds uh, with great success. Uh, but the thing is, it also works all the way up into engineering school. So I can, if you want, I can show you a really, really advanced robot. Sure. That's pretty cool. Love to. Uh, so this is probably one of the most advanced solutions at CES, mechanically. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, once again, just a single servo. It's a strange robot. It's my baby simulator. So I did it because I was becoming a dad. So uh, I wanted to see how, what areas of my apartment the baby can reach. So then I had to invent something that crawled on the floor. So when I turn this on, you see that it has a hip here, and it's moving in three dimensions here, pushing itself forward, but it's also pushing inward. So this means I can actually make it move forward and turn left and right using a single actuator. So if we come into the engineering, this is actually pretty advanced because of the 3D mechanical properties of the system. Now I can also affect this with light. So I didn't make it uh, remote controllable like that, but now I can just scare it away here, you see? Afraid of the light. <laughs> so yeah, we're a bit of a crazy robotic company, uh, but we want the kids to learn through a trial and error to build their ability to observe, come up with a solution and implement it. How do you see this coming into play in classrooms? Yeah, so in classrooms, that's where, so we made these experiences where we guide the teachers and the students to the first step to a base model, and then we open up how to start improving it and inventing your own solutions. And then failing is one of the coolest ways of inventing great solutions. So I can actually show a really interesting double failure that happened yesterday uh, here. So I have another wave, if I just move it to another output here. So we have two motor positions on this simple circuit board. So now it's moving... You, you, you saw before when I was showing a forced failure, pushing it down too far. So I pushed it down too far, if you remember before, but this time, when I was telling the students to push it down on the ground yesterday, they put it down wrong, so they double failed, which made it work. So then we put it down like this, 
You see, now it's sliding, even though it's... Yeah. And then, all of a sudden, you made the, the world's worst Roomba that can clean up straws from the ground. <laughs> so, but that's the thing. We want to teach this kind of creativity. It's not about making perfect solutions. It's about sketching and implementing ideas. Yeah. Very that's cool. It comes into play. I don't know if that actually answered your question. Yeah, no, no, this is very bit, cool. Right. Um, it definitely looks like a... It definitely looks like a fun process. It looks like something that's going to engage kids in a way where it's exciting and interesting and not just sort of rote learning, not just learning stuff by memory. Yeah, exactly. And it's very important because we can see this, these prototyping skills that I showed now. It's, you saw that they're accessible. You see they can even see the solutions. It's not 10 minutes of rebuilding. It's one minute of small changes. So it intrinsically works for them to build this uh, endurance that you need when you actually start engineering or trying to solve a, a problem you really want to solve. So we want to build that. L lots of creative problem solvers. Uh, and to do that, I believe it has to be fun to actually build that endurance. So where are these products available? Where can people get them? So right now, you have, they're obviously from our website, strawbees.com, but also on Amazon here in the US. And Barnes & Noble carries it, so you can walk into a store, try it out. Um, and what's the robot kit retail for? Uh, it's $99. $99. And you can build lots of crazy robots. <laughs> oh, you know, there's also a um, another component that you showed off before that we'd like to check out. There is uh, the coding that you have here. The coding interface. Yeah, so we developed our own interface just, just like we said before. We wanted it to be pretty fast. So if I wanted to change, for example, the robot here. Now, this is the solar array. It compares to uh, inputs here, uh, to um, uh, light sensors, adds the values from them. I have one that goes negative values, and then you get a, a couple of values you can say, and it just translates that out to the servo here. So it's pretty simple. I can show the walker, for example, just to um, see the walker. This is the robot I showed you before, and the two outputs have two different waves connected to them. So you see two blocks. And within that simple two-block system, you have so much exploration to do. Uh, and actually, that was the light sensor that I dropped. We also use standard components. So the students can actually start gathering materials from like electronic waste and stuff. If it's a five on a five-volt circuit, it works with this. Any analog sensor can be used. But So let's look at, uh, for example, this wave. If I want to change this to make it work faster, for example, I go in and just change the wavelength here. So I can tap it, and let's uh, say that maybe it's going to go faster if I slide it down. My fingers is too big to, uh, this is, uh, I'm new with this laptop, so let's see. Let's go down to a point 72 wave. And if we want to upload that to the, to the robot, you take a USB cable. So we chose to have a cable interface because it also charges the robot. We actually have rocket science classes too for uh, as young as seven year olds <laughs> we, we think rocket science is pretty fun uh, so now uh, actually I'm on the second I want to do with my change in the code on server output number one so this is number one servo you see a wave here and I want to make it faster so I change the value now it's connected and we upload and then the code should be transferred to the robot. It's eating the code here. <laughs> Actually, I, I think I made it slower, so I didn't know what the original thing was, but you get the, you get the idea. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's really all about just playing around and having yeah, fun with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And, cool. Uh, and we believe that is what we need to do to actually start solving problems. It's having fun, playing a little bit more with our ideas, and uh-oh, uh it's going to drop off the cliff here. Yeah. Thank you cool. so much. Thank you, Eric. Uh, we are with Strawberry Robotics. They are from Sweden. Um, and uh, check them out. We are 2019 CES. Brian Stillman with Be Terrific, BeTerrific.com. We will have more for you throughout the week.